All right, what is good, everybody? It's time for the Friday edition of Lease Morning Take, presented by Botano, Nick Alberga, and guest co-host Carter Hutton. What's going on, Huts? Nothing, buddy. Good to be back here, my man. Twice in a week. This is more than I played when I was in the NHL, buddy. I'm getting my reps in now, Nicky. Thanks for having me back on. Hey, my pleasure. Uh, lots to talk about. Um, it's sort of fascinating when the Leafs win. They're winning the Stanley Cup. When they lose, it, it, the sky's falling. I, I could not believe, and I've said this so many times, I could not believe social media after that game. A meaningless game. I think it was game 79 of the season. Whatever. You're chasing 70 goals for Austin Matthews. You lay a stinker. And and people just wanted to vilify Ilya Samsonov for some reason. Yeah. Like, they were due for a burger of a game, right? And I think that was it. You know, obviously, there's a few goals that we want back. And a few yeah. just costly mistakes. Bad turnovers. Some costly errors. But... Man, they've been dialed in for so long. This is just an outlier. I wouldn't worry. I, this is one of those ones you don't even watch video on. You just throw it in the trash. You move on. You start worrying about the next game. And for this team, I think that'll be important because there's going to be times in the playoffs where you lose either it's a close game or you lose a game that, you know, you just didn't play that well and you have to park it, right? Because at the end of the day, you just don't want to start losing two, three in a row because come playoff time, that's early exit. Yeah, shocker to everybody. You're going to have to deal with adversity at some point in time in the Stanley Cup playoffs and to hang everything on the hat of a loss in game 79, a 6-5 loss, I, I think it's crazy, but it mean, uh, it, maybe it speaks uh, beauty to the market that we live in and the team that we cover here in the Toronto Maple Leafs. Start on a somber note, so uh, Thursday night, of course, hosting the New Jersey Devils. I, I thought it was a really job well done by the Maple Leafs and their organization for paying tribute to Rodian Amirov, who passed away, as we know, back in uh, August at, to brain cancer at 21. He was a 2020 first-round pick of the Maple Leafs. His family was in attendance. Very, very emotional night for them. Could only imagine how they feel right now, but uh, great of the Leafs to have them there. And, and for them to just watch a game, it's just so sad. They should be watching their son or their brother play in that game, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. It's nice that they honored him. And it's, again, I think it's just a great opportunity for the NHL and the Leafs to just humanize the players too. At times we just like, it's our best players. We just want hockey from them, but these are real people and stuff happens. And obviously it's pretty sad. So it's great to see them honored. And I think the crowd did a great job of, you know, getting behind it and uh, sad to see. That's for sure. It's crazy sitting here now with kids and it's a, it's a young guy to pass away at that age. It really puts life into perspective. Certainly when we monitored that story and it really felt like he had an impact on that room too. I know he didn't play a game for the Toronto Maple Leafs. He was probably nowhere close to being on the NHL roster because everything hit him so quickly. Uh, but he had a big time impact on that room. And I thought that was a great gesture by the Toronto Maple Leafs to have his family there for that game. And they were treated to a good one. If you love offense, that was your night against the New Jersey Devils on Thursday. And a couple things of, of positive note that would I would certainly pick out, and I would instruct all of you to head over to the Leafs Nation 401 here on YouTube if you're not and you're listening in podcast form. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. But Jay Rosehill, right away when I saw Max Domi's response on Simone Nemich um, of the New Jersey Devils, who was trying to rough up Austin Matthews, I'm like, Rosie, uh, get to a computer screen, get to your phone, record something. Tell me how you truly feel about Domi stepping up, man. I thought that was awesome, Huts. Yeah, it was great. And it's one of those ones like I know there's a little bit of blowback about like a young guy doing it and Domi just goes and starts the fight before he knows what's going on. But this is the NHL and you're going after a guy who just is the best goal scorer in the world. You got to know what's coming. Like this is hockey's tale as old as time, right? Since we were peewee. If you went after the best player, somebody was coming to get you. So it's one of those things where if you want to go up that, you want to bark up that tree, you got to know what's coming. And, and good on Domi, too. And I love the candid shot of Ty again. I love it. Just I think he has the same outfit on. Eh? He's got the same hat, so. the same as a, the exact same gear as the last time when the guy was trying to touch him. And that guy was one touch away from getting filled in the stands. So I love it. And Domi is just immersed in the Leafs right now. I, I love what he's doing. I think he's becoming a fan favorite. And... We, we could sit here months ago being like, oh, Domi Bertuzzi, blah, blah, blah. These are the guys that can get it done in the big games and when it matters, and they're showing that now. And this line is awesome. Moral of the story, don't touch Poppy, don't touch Ty Domi. Um, I think that was a shrewd point that you made that nobody this time tapped Ty Domi, but I, I love the reaction shots. And I love when Ty reacts because he doesn't react. He's like, yeah, I've done this 1,700 times in my life, in my career, whatever. Uh, but I, I think that goes a long way. Max Domi is playing some unbelievable hockey right now, not only with his, with his fists, but 
Uh, offensively, I think I saw he has like 15 points in the last 16 games, and that dates back to when Mitch Marner got hurt against Boston, which is great to see. But I love the response level, and I love the hockey world because what's the storyline today? Not in Toronto. It's like, oh, the Leafs are soft. They're going after youngsters. They're going after rookie players where – Three months ago, they were the softest team in the league. They wouldn't respond to this shit. Like, which is it? I, I just don't understand, you know? No, I agree. It's it's pick your poison at times, right? So for me, you know, they, they talk about them soft. They talk about being hard. It, it, it's tricky, right? But that is the culture and living in the fishbowl of Toronto, right? You're going to deal with the ups and downs, and every game is the cliffhanger, right? Like, if you win it, plan the parade. If you lose it, we're getting bumped first round. So that's the cross you bear. But there's a lot of good things to come out of that tonight. And I, and I think about some galvanizing moments for this team. We've touched on a lot. The Ridley Gregg with Morgan Riley. And then even Mitch Marner being out of the lineup has created the opportunities for this line. So there's been so many different dynamics to the team and so many different storylines throughout the year, which I think brings a team together. And you just see them bonding. Even when like Ryan Reeves is fighting and getting everyone involved in the game. And he's those are players that like – drag you into the fight especially on teams where you have the stars you have the star power you need those little extra guys that are going to make nights the stars don't have it bring them into the fight and I, I think they're doing a great job of becoming a team more than i've seen in the last few years it has been a saddening time for the calculator community that's all you can pretty much say from max domi's emergence to tyler bertuzzi to ryan reeves the leafs responding to everything uh with a bit of snarl a bit of you know fuck you in there in there like their fuck you to, th to, to 60 is, is over the moon right now. Like, it's it's wild that you do the littlest thing and there will be repercussions. I didn't think it was crazy what the youngster did to Matthews, but Max Domi showed up on his doorstep. Hey, you ordered a pizza? No, I didn't. No, you're taking the pizza. Like, it, I think it's so great to see. I think this type of stuff is contagious. I think it holds everybody accountable. And I know they lost the game, but that was my takeaway. It's like Max Domi just pretty much told the entire league, and I know it's a rookie, told the New Jersey Devils, we have a guy who's about to score 70 goals. You are not fucking touching him. And that starts in this game. It starts moving forward. It goes to the playoffs. Like, I was pumped about it. No, and, and rightfully so, too, right? And this is why you are a team, right? Like, guys know what's going on. They're not going to treat Austin with white gloves, right? They're still trying to win hockey games and do that. But they know who their star. He is the guy that's going to get you through and make stuff happen. And again... This is stuff that just inspires the crowd and the team. And for me, I look at this for Ty Doming, like, like or it's not Ty, sorry, I'm just, we're all pumped up on him. But Max, like a galvanizing moment again for him, just being a Toronto Maple Leaf, wearing it on his sleeve, jumping in. This is what you need coming into the playoffs. Because we look at some different years where in Florida, even last year, getting pushed around a bit with size and not thinking they had that. We talked about the addition tree living made with Reeves, with Bertuzzi, with Domi. These are for those moments, right? When we look at what we're going to head in the playoffs, you're playing Florida, whoever you're playing, Boston, say Marchand, guys are taking shots to Chuck. You have guys that are going to answer the bell and they're not waiting for it. We talk about sometimes where guys were hesitant to get in there. That isn't this Leafs team anymore. They're going to back each other up, whether it's Matthews, whoever it is, these guys are in it for the long haul. And it's something I love it. I'm pumped up about it. It's wild. You know, I talked about it on yesterday's show. We had Mike Rupp on and I said um, over under two and a half scrums in the first 10 minutes of game one, regardless of the opponent. And I think it's going to be the over and I think it's going to be the Leafs initiating those scrums saying, hey, we're here for the fight. I know it's cliche, but it just feels like a different team. It really, really does. And the response level, the way they play, the depth they possess. And again, uh, all that will be thrown out the door starting next Thursday when the season's done on Wednesday and we start looking forward to that first round matchup. But you have to feel good about where the Maple Leafs are at right now. And I know there's a lot of people on social media bitching and complaining. We're going to get to the goaltending story with Ilya Samsonov and the tough outing against New Jersey. I'm sorry to break it to everybody. You cannot win all 82 games. Last time I checked, Huts, there there hasn't been a team that went 82-0 and in the NHL regular season, right? No, and especially in goal, too. Like, I get Samsonov had his struggle, so I feel like everyone has a little bit of deja vu, right? Everybody's worried, and, and you know, the short-term memory kind of kicks in, and you're like, man, it was not that long ago where he was an absolute Achilles heel to this hockey team. But if you look around the NHL, there's been numerous guys like 
Shesterkin had a bad run where Quick was the guy. Sorokin now, he's not even playing. They have Varlamov playing. So it goes in ebbs and flows, right? Stuart Skinner, again, had like a horrible... There's Everybody deals with it. Connor Hellebuck had a little stretch where they were losing games and he was not a difference maker. So for me, it's like just pump the brakes. Like his sample size now, it's not like it's been like five games of good and then he laid a bad game. Like he's been rock solid for since his reset, right? So... These are games, yes, last night, he'd be the first one to tell you he wants a few back. But a couple of them, like, Giordano puts one on the ladies' tees. They score. Like, even the goal, like, for me, it was, like, there was a lot to go off last night. That's where you talk about just, like, parking that game. That's a game where you literally, coaches, just take the video, throw it in the trash, let's move on. And then individually, maybe you grab a few guys and we work on a little things. But other than that, man, that's one to park. And I think social media and Leafs Nation at times, Let's just relax. It's not, it's not, it's not a problem yet. Park that thought. We're going to get more in depthly into that game against the New Jersey Devils. But first, we want to tell you about Greta Bar YYZ set to open its doors on Friday, April 26th, deep in the heart of King Street West in downtown Toronto. Greta Bar will act as your go-to spot for all the hockey playoffs and baseball coverage you can handle. Whether you're pre-gaming, looking to watch the big game, post-gaming, or just looking to dust your friends off at some arcade games, Greta Bar YYZ. We'll have you covered with delicious eats and thirst-quenching drinks. Go big. Go to Greta Bar YYZ. <music> Cannot wait for the grand opening of Greta Bar, of course, coming up uh, next Friday. Um, just, you know, it's, it's, it's exciting times, April the 26th, I guess two Fridays from now, cause we're sitting here at the 12th. So, uh, we're closing in on the first day of action there. Greta Bar YYZ looking forward to that. And, uh, I think it's perfect cause you can wear your, uh, your nation gear in the Greta Bar. Um, the playoffs are near and we are ready to bleed blue nation gear is ready to gear you up for Toronto's playoff run. Rep your favorite team as they battle for the cup shop, the exclusive bleed blue playoff tee. And more at nationgear.ca. That's nationgear.ca. Um, in mere moments, you'll see on your screen right there the bleed blue t shirt that we've un unveiled our official playoff t shirt. Huts. Hopefully, it's a long postseason for the Maple Leafs. Yeah, hopefully, it is. And again, uh, I think earlier in the year, you know, uh, I always touch back on Rosie's leafy hockey, right? Like it's something yeah. he got used to. And, uh, I was not a believer early on, but honestly, the last little while here, I, I am. I'm in. I'm in. And it's going to be fun. I think this team is buzzing right now. And again, like there's a few things to take away from that game last night, but I think getting Edmondson back is obviously important. But yeah, let's, I, I'm excited for playoffs, man. I think you got to be optimistic in Toronto right now. And I think the energy is high, especially not on the rink, especially with the fan base in that last night, Scotia Bank sounded loud again, even at times where they lost. But what a game to go to. 11 it was, and the energy is high in the chat as well at the Leafs Nation 401 on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Leafs Morning Take, wherever you find your podcast. A reminder, if you're doing so, make sure to leave us a five-star review. Maybe uh, something you love about this podcast. That would be great. And don't forget, visit the theleafsnation.com. We are attached to that website. We work in affiliation with them. So make sure to check out the great work I write on that website. Producer Vic writes on that website on a daily basis. So, uh, go over to theleafsnation.com. A lot of great stories and storylines ahead of the Stanley Cup playoffs. The team over there has done a fantastic job. The numbers are growing by the day, so make sure to go check out theleafsnation.com. Brought to you by DoorDash. It's time for the appetizer. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off, up to $10 in value and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more. When you download the DoorDash app, enter code NATION25. It's code nation 25 all in uppercase, 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Offer valid in Canada. Subject to change. Terms apply. What's it like for a goalie in a game like that? That was my wonder watching it. It was very wide open. You mentioned the Mark Giordano pass, the first period. Heck, I think there were two goals scored in the first 39 seconds. How small do you feel as a goalie in that type of game? Yeah, it's tough. You just know it's coming. You know things are off. and But those are the ones where it like really tests your mental fortitude of just staying with it because it's nights where the term that always was passed on to me as a goalie was sometimes it's not how many you make. It's like when you make them, right? Especially a night like that where there's going to be a key point at a certain moment when you make a save that could change the game, right? Where even though you gave up a bad statistic night, you gave up five or six or whatever which way it goes, you got to find a way to win hockey games. and all. The, that's what trumps everything. And those are one of those nights where it starts slipping away and you're fighting it. It is hard because you're 
talking about two high powered offenses that were buzzing. I felt a bad for both goalies last night. Like again, Jake Allen didn't get a lot of help in his end either. And at Samson off, you know, there's a few he wants back, but at the same time, a few of those, there's not much you can do. So as a goalie, you're just mentally trying to stay with it. Cause you never know when that chance is going to come when you can make a big save. Yeah. Make the next save is all I could think. And I should mention as well, I sort of buried the lead, but we're going to have Mark Crawford on this show in about 15 from, uh, from now coaches the Zurich Lions out in Switzerland. Of course, I think a nice little tie in as well. The affiliation to Austin Matthews, uh, of course, Austin, was out in Zurich for his uh, draft season, played for uh, Mark Crawford. So we're going to get his thoughts on what he saw from Matthews way before his NHL career started to where he's at now. And uh, I was telling Hutz off there, and I'll bring it on there. Uh, nice little tie-in as well. I forgot that Mark Crawford was an assistant for Ottawa when Matthews made his debut that, that night in, in Canada. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool to see that come full circle, right? Like being with him in Switzerland and then being overseas here, you know, a former goalie, obviously he's been around the game for a long time. So it's going to be interesting. I, for me, I always get excited to see guys like that that have been with the game for so long, how their perspective has changed and what they've seen over time as players have developed and the games developed. So it'll be really, I'm looking forward to chatting with him and getting his perspective on it. Getting back to Samsonov now, six goals on 20 shots. Uh, was it an off night or reason for concern? Because, uh, Again, th this market is just waiting, and now everybody's turning to Joseph Wall to be the savior. But you've got to understand, like, it's a long season. There's going to be tough nights. And I think from a defensive standpoint, a PK standpoint, it was not a great night for the Maple Leafs. No, yeah, again, I, I, I'm i not really concerned. I think it was just an off night for him. You could tell it was, you know, a couple moving to his glove side there, leaky, like getting through him the one-timer. And then the five-hole one was one. On the Brat, on the, the Brat goal is a tough one, right? It's a winner, but like at the same time, Edmonton gets beat on that play and he gets to walk right down. So there's a few takeaways for me, little things you could work on, but I wouldn't start seeing this as a problem. Where we're like, when we were talking about Samson off earlier in the year, it was like glaring. He was all over the map. A few things went through him last night, and that's going to happen. There's going to be off nights. The best goalies in the world have off nights. So I wouldn't be parking this. But at the same time, not to say that he is the savior by any means, like, it's got to be goaltending by committee for this hockey team. Like Joseph Wall's got to get in there and play well and push. And they need both guys ready to go because at a moment's notice, anything can happen, right? We look at traditionally what's happened with different goalies and different scenarios. Even Vegas last year, they ran through a slew of guys. So you've got to have Joseph Wall ready to go. But I don't think this is time to hit the panic button. But we know we love the panic button in Toronto, Nikki. We do, we do. How, how would you deploy the goalies in the last three games? So they have Detroit at home on Saturday. I think we both agree it's going to be Joseph Wool. And then you have the back-to-back -back, uh, in Florida, Tuesday, Wednesday. So Tuesday against the Panthers, who are expected to be the first-round opponent, then Tampa on Wednesday to finish off the regular season. Yeah, so I definitely think you go Joseph Wall next game, right? Give Samson off some time, a little reset, a little, like, to build energy. Then I think on the back-to-back, I wish it was flipped the other way because it'd be nice to protect him from playing Florida, in my opinion. But I also think you don't want to play him on a back-to-back. -back. You want to give him the rested team, in my opinion, because he's your guy. You know, you want to protect him the best you can. Joseph Wall's a young guy. I think he gets the, the last game of the season. And then from there, it's Samsonoff's crease. Uh, unless, like, I, I, I honestly think that Joseph Wall can't do enough in these last two games to take the starting job game one, in my personal opinion. Uh, unless something happens when Samsonov gets that start in Florida where he's just absolutely horrendous, then all of a sudden it's a little bit of a, you know, what do we do here? But that's the way I play it and that's the way I see it. So then that way both guys are ready to go come uh, playoff time. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. Like, is there anything possible that Wool can do? But I couldn't agree more. I think there's a bit of a leash there. At the very least, I think you're going to see Ilya Samsonov in game one. If it doesn't go according to plan or script, I think they would flip in a second to Joseph Wall, and that's just the nature and the volatility of the position. I've been on record for a couple of months. They're gonna they're gonna need at least two goalies in the playoffs. Like both guys will play. Would it shock anybody if if you know Martin Jones came in there? Just look at what happened last year, right? With Murray and Samsonov. I mean, the list went on and on. You look at Vegas, it's such a volatile position right now. You just don't know what's gonna happen. So they have the depth. Um, I think obviously you want Wool feeling good. He gets two starts down the stretch here, and I couldn't agree more. I think that's exactly the way I would do it, and you would speak better to that. You played in this league, quite frankly. But uh, Saturday, Joseph Wool against Detroit. Not confirmed, but it makes a lot of sense. Austin Matthews in that game will be going for 70 goals. Uh, it's wild because watching the game against Jersey, you, you sort of had that feeling it was going to happen, you know, like that night. Like it was imminent. He scores two goals. 
right off the bat. He owns the New Jersey Devils, man. 18 goals in 18 career games. If you're not betting on Matthews to score against Jersey, I do not know what you are doing, but he needs two more for 70. The even strength numbers, I think, past Matt Sundin last night. Like, the accolades just continue for this guy. That shot is so electric. And the chemistry, too. Both goals, unbelievable feeds by Max Domi. Yeah, great plays. The The camera work on the first goal was amazing. Like, to show his release and... For people who don't understand hockey, it's not necessarily about just shooting the puck as hard as you can, right? Like, obviously, I face Matthews and I face numerous goal scorers. The fact that he walks in to that area and it's the deception, like he can lean into it. The puck looks like it's going to release somewhere in his inside his body, maybe high glove. And he goes back across the grain to the blocker. It's such a great shot. And he picks his spot. It's a goal anytime walking in from there. And then the other one is. Obviously, well, they're both great plays by Domi, don't get me wrong. But the pass across is literally just a deflection in, but it just shows you how strong Matthews is at the net. He has a guy draped on him. He's strong on his stick, and Domi just feeds one right through. What a pass. What a goal. Very unethical, though. I was thinking about that one when that one went in. Uh, the Twitter uproar about all the goals. So it was uh, it was great to see. And obviously last night, I think getting to those two, it almost like gives a little bit of pressure off with three games remaining to the 70. You know, if he was still sitting at 67, you're feeling it now. I'm like, you know, when is he going to hit it almost? Not if he hits it. Oh, me too. And and for me, I was just like, get away from that 67 number as quickly as you can. I don't want the jokes, but now we're waiting for the jokes of number 69. It just doesn't stop. Um, but I'm curious, <laughs> how, how many goals in your career did you surrender to Austin Matthews? Ooh, I don't know. We'd have to look it up, but it had to be like four or five for sure. Um, so you had an easy I always. Event. I had it easy for sure. I, I always, like, I had some fairly decent games against the Leafs. I think I was 5-0 and against the Leafs until I went to Buffalo. Then things went downhill fast. But I always found Austin Matthews so tricky when he would have the puck on the power play when he would come down. They used to play him and Nylander like they would swoop down. And he'd come with pressure. And he would honestly have so much patience and skill. He would wait for the defender to go down to try to block it. And then he would pull the puck. He'd adjust his angle so much. So if as a goalie, if I went to move too much or I made any slight movement, if I wasn't patient, he would expose you. And then he really started using that five hole shot. And it just adds another dynamic. It's another tool for him. And, you know, he's a dangerous player. And on top of that, then you add in the bumper play with Tavares. You add in all the other elements they have. It just makes it such a dynamic, you know, with his skill set alone added with all of that. Yeah, I find like positioning as a goalie when trying to face Austin Matthews would be tough. And I would do my best to tie it into like the sport I was best at. And that was baseball. Like, you know, I've been asked before, like, what's it like facing 95, 96 in the box? It's like a P, man. You have no reaction time. I can only feel the same way because Matthews has the shot. He has the hands. Like, it's almost impossible to defend this guy. Like, you don't know what's coming. And that's the scary part. Yeah, it is scary. And, and he has so many tools. So for me... As a goalie, like when he's coming and you're obviously aware of who's on the ice, right? As you get better in your game and you develop, it's like you're consciously aware of who's on the ice, right? So I would always play it as like red line in. As the puck crosses the red line, I'm taking my breath. I'm getting ready. I'm setting up. But I am aware of who's on the ice. And for me, my when I had my most success, it was based on patience and holding my feet. And what you see with a lot of goalies when they struggle is guys start to move too much. We talk about Samsonov when he was struggling, sliding outside the post and chasing the game. When Samsonov is set, holds his feet, gets there in position, he's much more efficient. And that was the same goes for me, especially, and it's even more exemplified when you're playing against a guy like that who can expose you in so many different ways. So just being patient against high-end guys is going to give you the best success. But when a guy's walking down to the ladies' tees like Austin Matthew, there's not much you can do other than hope it hits you. It's absolutely nuts uh, watching this guy again uh, run out of superlatives to describe uh, Austin Matthews and his worth to this team. He's just night and day better than anybody else. And that's why I can't justify paying anybody close to Austin Matthews. I think of note last night too, Nylander, Marner, JT logged almost four minutes together. Shot attempts were 14 to one. How shocking is that for you, Hutz? Yeah, yeah, it is uh, kind of crazy, right? But it's nice to see some depth and everybody going and, for me, it's one of those games, right? It's it's there's lots of positives too, especially offensively. But then you start to worry about some of the defensive things. But again, something we can touch on as we go here. Again, I think this is one you just park, especially from the goalie standpoint and the building. There's times throughout an 82 game schedule where I would have great runs and we you know pick on things when things are rolling, and then you you lay an egg or you 
you know, a, a team game where it doesn't go as well, you almost just park it and move on and, and honestly not even identify the game. So I, I think that would be a game and my perspective, what you do with last night's game. Definitely. And I, I think when you look at Nylander specifically, he's showing signs of busting loose. But remember back like a month and a half ago, he everything, you know, he was shooting was hitting the back of the net. Now it's like the the opposite. Um, I think he's a bit he's he's in a, a bit of a drought. I think obviously you want to see Matthew score number 70. But uh, right alongside that is is my objective to get Nylander a goal before the playoffs. Just get the confidence going a bit. Yeah, for sure, right? And and it comes like that. It comes in waves. There's times where even Ma Matthews was dried up there for a bit, and it's and the the margin for error is so th thin with these guys, right? It's different if you're like a defensive player and you're just chipping pucks out and you can go and play a a running gun where you're just throwing the body. Where these offensive guys, they're flying. There's flow to it, and they need to have it. So for me, getting his confidence going. But you know, we, William Nylander doesn't lack confidence. And he now he has some experience in the playoffs. I think it's more about having them healthy, ready to go as soon as playoffs start. Five points back of Florida for second in the Atlantic with one game in hand. Five points up on Tampa, third in the Atlantic, both at 79 games. So what we're telling you is it's going to be, they're going to be on the road to start the playoffs. And I think they're comfortable. We talked about that the other day. The Leafs, uh, 24 road wins, a franchise record for some reason. And Stewie, Anthony Stewart put it perfectly on the show the other day. It's because they don't have to deal with the glitz and the glamour of Toronto. And I think that's a pretty good reason why the Maple Leafs have been so successful on the road this season, Huts. Yeah, sometimes it's nice. Sometimes it's nice to get out of your own bed and you just go to the hotel and you're with the team and you're just focused on hockey. And I noticed that as I got older a bit too, it was different when you're at home. Sometimes you're bored and where you get on the road and, or if you're at home and you're a family man, you have kids, you have other distractions and you do your best to compartmentalize that side of your life. But at the same time, going on the road, it's like you're there for the purpose, right? And and not that that is falling behind. You know, you you already understand the routine. You've just been through an 82 game season of being on the road, and you have your setup and what you like. So sometimes it's nice to start on the road. You eliminate that pressure, and, and there's more of a free flowing game, you could say. You know, you almost simplify it. Where at home, I think we've touched on this earlier. There's almost a lot more expectations when you're at home because of the market you're in, because people demand success, because guys want you to win. Um, you go on the road, let's just go there and get a split. Let's go there and have a good penalty kill. Let's go there and find little things to chip away at a game. And then the next thing you know, you played 60 minutes and you've won where the pressure at home can be a bit more daunting heading into it. So I think it's not bad. And at the end of the day, if you want to be a Stanley Cup champion, you're going to have to find a way to be good at home and on the road. I believe our guest is ready, so let's get to him. This interview is brought to you by Douglas, named Canada's best mattress on Canadian living. Douglas is loved by more than 200,000 Canadians, and they're backed by over 10,000 five-star reviews. Every mattress order comes with a free comfort sleep bundle, two memory foam pillows with pillow protectors, one luxurious cotton sheet set, and one mattress protector. Order today at douglas.ca slash LMT. It is Mark Crawford. Crow, do we, we want to wait till you get home to do this interview? You want to do it now? I think we might have lost him there. Oh, we got him. Oh, I think we dropped you. We're going to try to connect once again with Mark Crawford and the audio as well. Uh, so we'll do our best to do that. Mark Crawford expected to join us here on Leafs Morning Take. Talk some Austin Matthews. But yeah, it's been a, it's been a crazy ride, Huts. When you remember back to the first game of the season, the hat trick um, for Austin Matthews to where he is now. Just every game, bing, 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 goal, goal, goal. It's crazy. Yeah, no, it's been a, it's been a crazy storyline, right? Especially having that law right at one point like 70 seemed out of the question because it just kind of like he, he dried up a little bit and it wasn't coming to him and right now this little mix and it's wild sitting here saying that you talk about different points of the season there's obviously highs and lows and ebbs and flows of a season and you know a few moments but like marner's injury looking back now might be one of this thing that got this line together where they have this it's been a shot in the arm for austin matthews this energy he's created with domi this it almost like a Bro, they're bros like they're just like they have so much fun together you can see it it's pouring out the the re-emergence of ryan Reeves has been huge for this team there's been so many different little storylines and it's and it's always positive it seems very positive it's obviously the Ilya samson off one is not you know we've talked on it the masterton it's there's so many good storylines and to see this team buzzing as they are right now it, it's a, an exciting time to be a leafs fan and to be on a toronto maple leafs team with a lot of potential so Joel Edmondson, your former teammate, returns, missed uh, eight games, played 19-22. Your prototypical Edmondson um, stat line, by the way, 19-22, minus one, five hits, three block shots, a bit of this, a bit of that. <laughs> a couple cross-checks, too. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think the only one for me would be like the last one there, like Jesper Ratt. Like he's got to have him pinched off or Brody's got to come over and help him out on that play. But it's nice to see him back in the lineup. And that's a tricky team to come back into the lineup against because they're a bunch of little water bugs. Like Jersey plays with speed. They have offensive. They're cycling. They're moving the puck where he's going to be a better suited when you start getting into the playoffs, in my opinion, when he's going to be playing a more ground and pound game. But that's a good first game back for him, getting him in the lineup, playing. So I love Edmondson. I'm biased. He's like one of my all-time favorite teammates, people, all-around guy. So this is just a great guy to have in the locker room come playoffs times as well. I think that's something people, maybe they don't view it as much as I do. Is You talk about even last year getting, uh, you know, like Ryan O'Reilly and Luke Shen in that room and just some veteran presence that bring the guys together. Because a younger age, like when I first came in the NHL, a great example was like, we were mandatory. You go somewhere, like you're coming out for a beer and a bite to eat. Like we're getting together all the time as a team where younger guys are more enough to be on their own or have like their video games or have other outlets where you get some of these more team guys, veteran guys, they bring the boys together. And that's so important because you look at the way this team's going now. And I know you can't put a lot of weight on that if you haven't played the game, but I, I can't stress how important that is becoming a team and believing in each other and not and putting your personal accolades aside and what you want for yourself for the good of the team and that's what these kind of guys do and Joel Edmondson is the perfect example of that camaraderie right and uh yeah just watching Edmondson like he's the prototypical guy you want in the Stanley Cup playoffs how nasty he is even watching the game last night I know he made some mistakes but it's his first game in eight so I give him the benefit of the doubt. He has that brand that is conducive to a winning style in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Saw it in St. Louis, saw it in Montreal to a degree in Washington. Guy who brings a lot of intangibles to the table, as you mentioned, not just on the ice, but off the ice. So looking forward to seeing Joel Edmondson in a playoff climate in a week and a half. That should be a lot of fun. Uh, but in general, I, I think this team has to be feeling good about itself I, I think John Tavares is a guy who's been up and down throughout the season but scores two goals last night his 12th 25 plus goal season this guy has been the model of consistency in his NHL career and it continues man just the beat goes on nothing phases him not too high never too low it, it, it's great to have that mindset playing in the NHL especially when you're the captain of the Leafs eh? yeah for sure and honestly you say Tavares and I initially just think of consistency. Like you obviously, <laughs> you led right into my initial first thought and the way his game is, it's almost like, you know what you're going to get. It's kind of like a good fifth or sixth defenseman. There's predictability. It's simple. There's nothing going to be crazy flashy. And he just goes in the hard areas and he makes the good plays and he works hard and he's kind of that Swiss army knife. So for me, this is a guy going into playoffs. You don't really need to worry about. And it's almost a playoff that's built more for a player like him where you talk about the NHL speed open boom, where maybe his foot speed isn't at that elite level comparative to some of the guys he plays with, but that's going to get eliminated come playoff time. Cause everything's going to get bogged up. Everyone is defending even harder. And he is a guy that's going to help you in the offensive zone, help you in the defensive zone. So another feather in his cap, it, it, it's unbelievable what he's done quietly. I know he takes some abuse at times because of his contract, but I, I like name a person who ever said like, Oh, it's your fault for getting paid too much money. Right? Like good on him for making his dough. And he brings it every single day. It's not like he signed a big ticket and he shut the mill. Like he still comes about it every single day and it'll be exciting to see what he can bring come playoffs. Yeah. It's funny. I mean, I covered John Tavares when he had those 30 some odd games, a member of the London Knights where he was traded from Oshawa, the only place he knew, like almost very similar to, you know, being a New York Islander. It was a brand new destination. It was the Mecca. And uh, quite frankly, he didn't disappoint. The team did disappoint, sadly, just like the Leafs do in the Stanley Cup playoffs. That London Knights team was stacked. I mean, they had John Carlson. They had Michael Del Zotto. The list went on and on and on. But goaltending was the big story. And it was saddening because my buddy was the goalie on that team. Just couldn't get healthy, uh, couldn't play well, and they couldn't beat the Windsor Spitfires. Um, but I think when you look at JT, he's just been a guy from day one since the age of 14 the capital, uh, uh, you know, the, the professionalism like that. That's the big word that is always attached to John Tavares. And I think being, people lose sight of the fact that he scored a massive monster goal, a winner for the Islanders organization. He scored the winner that propelled the Leafs to, to round two last year. Like this guy has a knack for dramatics. They're going to need it. Uh, the depth guys are going to be so big, too. Like, I think if the one thing I want to monitor the last couple games will be the depth scoring, whether it's Robertson. Tough to see him get that goal called back. It was going to be a 6th and 12. Uh, that's just tough. Like, 
And I think there's going to be, obviously, there is an internal battle. I don't know where you stand. Would Ryan Rees be on your game one roster ahead of a guy like Nick Robertson? That is a tough one. Um, that is. A, a really, really tough one. I, I think, yes, right now, just for the sense of, like, it almost sets a tone for the series because um, you have your high-powered offense. But Nick Robertson is doing a heck of a job to keep himself in this lineup. He has played so well. You know, there's obviously like that defensive. I, th I I don't think he gets enough credit for what he does defensively. I think there's a little bit of holes in his game, but like any young player, like they all go through it. So for me, that is going to be a tough question mark. But I also think that this is where it's like we have to win by committee. It can't just be this guy. It can't just be this guy. Yes, there's some staples that aren't leaving your lineup. Let's be totally honest, right? But there's going to be, you know, some D that come in and out. There's going to be some forwards that come in and out. And I think that's what Sheldon Keith has to his advantage this year is some depth and some mobility where he's got those three lines. Now it seems like everybody is playing in the right direction. So there's some options here, you know, say if they lay an egg, maybe he goes back and just, and necessarily it won't be the player's fault by any means. It's just to shake it up a little bit to like, you know, move forward. And you see that a lot with different teams as they go on runs, there's games where guys come in and out fluidity and Nick Robertson is doing a heck of a job to put his name on that uh, roster sheet for game one. That's for sure. He is, um, and I think adjustments are going to be so big in the Stanley Cup playoffs where, I don't know about you, I won't put as much of an emphasis or, or focus on on what I see in that game one roster. It's going to be Samsonov. I think Ryan Reeves is trending towards playing. I think you, you want to set a tone for the series, so that would make a lot of sense in my world, whether it's Boston or Florida, to have Ryan Reeves in the lineup and, and make Rebo earn it. I mean, if he plays the way he has been playing the last two and a half months and he gives you a reason not to take him out of the lineup, then you don't make that decision. I, I think if you're Sheldon Keefe, you you let the players determine what's going to happen. I, I think it's that's probably the way I would handle it. Like you win, you don't make changes. If you lose and you play well, you don't make changes. But I think there's going to be players who set you up to make changes. Unfortunately, it happens every year, right? Yeah, and there and there's a psyche that goes into it where you're playing a team in a seven game series, and every time the puck gets chipped in your corner, you're going to get the puck, and you're worried about getting absolutely ran through the boards. It makes a difference, and there's wear and tear. It might not be that check. It might be a. It might be the fiftieth check in game six where a guy gets a little tired or he's a little worried because he knows what's coming and he makes a bad play or he rushes a pass and it turns over and that puck ends up in the back of the net. That's what Ryan Reeves bring to the table. It doesn't have to be scoring. It doesn't have to be the big fight in the playoffs. Like there's times and he's a pro he's been doing this for so long. I know it's a term we use a lot, like as athletes or, you know, he's a real pro, but he is, he takes care of himself. He's a guy that's vocal in the locker room. He's going to stand up for guys. He does so many things and he's a veteran that understands what to do, when to do it. And that's an important thing going into a seven game series. Cause if I'm on the back end for Florida and you got Ryan Reeves running you through the glass, every single time he steps on the ice, man, it gets old real quick. It does. Um, so we're, we're trying to continue to connect here with Mark Crawford. I'll tell you what, if we don't do the interview on this show, we'll record it. We'll put it on YouTube. So you're not going to miss what Mark Crawford has to say, but let's move on over uh, to the game preview. And the only thing sweeter than the taste of victory, starting your day off with a new Cinnabon pull apart, from Wendy's. That said, there's no reason you can't have both now that Wendy's and Daily Faceoff Fantasy are giving you a chance to win weekly prizes all season long. And hey, even if you make a few wrong picks, at least you know heading to Wendy's right now for a $5 Cinnabon pull apart and a small coffee would be a great choice. Sign up for Daily Faceoff today, sponsored by Wendy's and the Wendy's app. So you're going to have another desperate team come into Scotiabank Arena on Saturday. The storylines of Austin Matthews hunting 70. And Detroit fighting for their playoff lives. Uh, the Maple Leafs have won five of seven, their third and final meeting with the Wings, met them in Sweden, beat them there. Then back in January the 14th, I remember that like it was yesterday, it was a Sunday. The Leafs put up a terrible effort. I think we came on the show and ripped Sheldon Keefe, but they lost 4-2 in that game. This is the rubber match. Uh, lots at stake, I think, for Detroit as opposed to Toronto, just chasing Matthews' as number 70. Yeah, honestly... <sighs> For Toronto, you're still trying to – every game is important, right? You're trying to monitor injuries and guys a little banged up and set the tone. But for this Detroit hockey team, it's kind of now or never, right? Especially after last night. Last night was a wild one to watch in Pittsburgh. Um, kind of last shot wins. And, and like I touched on talking about when goalies are having a tough go, is it, just making one save at a certain time. And Nadelkovic in the other end for Pittsburgh made a big save in overtime on Larkin. EK goes down and scores on Alex Lyon. But – 
it's kind of now or never for this team, right? There's there's the Patrick Kane storyline. There's Larkin, his injury in and out. So this is going to be a big dynamic here, I think, coming into Toronto. And for the Leafs, again, with three games to close, you're worried about Austin Matthews a bit. I know guys want to get him to 70, but at the same time, the overall bigger picture is to be playing the right style of hockey heading into the playoffs. Speaking of which, I do believe we have our guest. He, uh, he is at home now after driving before uh, Mark Crawford. What's going on, Mark? Hey, sorry about that, guys. I really... Uh... Uh, I got caught in traffic here in Zurich on a Friday and uh, should always understand it a little bit better. People can appreciate that in Toronto, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, we can. And it's a OK. I'd rather you uh, at home uh, than driving. So fantastic. Uh, great to have you on. Obviously, we're here to talk about Austin Matthews. Uh, first and foremost, you're watching this. What's going through your mind as you watch him score goal after goal after goal here? Well, the, the two goals he scored last night, you know, you, you give Austin the kind of time that they gave him on the first uh, goal. He's going to score in those situations. He's just a pure shooter, and he's worked so much on his shooting. That that goal was classic um, uh, Austin Matthews and just too much time. On the other one, um, that's one of my former players here, uh, uh, the defenseman in front of the net for New Jersey was Jonas Ziegenthaler, and I think if anybody should know how good he is around the net, it should be him. And you got to not only tie up his stick, but you got to make sure that you don't allow him to get anywhere near uh, that area of the uh, uh, of the net. So you know we're we're cheering for Austin. Obviously, uh, everybody here is excited to see uh, his quest for 70, and uh, you know he still has a lot of fans in Zurich. Yeah, I believe it, Mark. Obviously, uh, the video last night of him walking down to the ladies' tee on Jake Allen, I felt for him because I've been in that position before, and guys like that don't miss from there. Uh, you know, getting to work with him early in his career, what have you seen, like, you know, moving forward? And, like, did you know he was going to be special when you first got to see him? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I've been fortunate enough in my time that I've had some really great players, you know, whether you talk about Peter Forsberg coming in as a rookie, Joe Sackick as a as a young hockey player, uh, Anze Kopitar, Jamie Benn, uh, the list, uh, you know, I've coached in the league a long time, so I've seen a lot of good players and I can remember when he came to Zurich. And uh, it had been a while since I I'd, uh, I'd coached, maybe two years. And I, I went, oh, that's what a great player looks like. Oh, yeah, I remember that look. I remember that look. So you just knew right away when you saw him playing uh, just how dynamic uh, his talent was. Um, on top of that, he's got an in incredible work ethic. And I think that combination, he's worked at his game so hard over the years. Uh, when he was here, we used to do a drill, uh, Carter, right at the start of the thing where guys would imitate the other guys. You know, it was kind of like follow the leader. And Austin would uh, would be the leader uh, against some of our guys. There were a lot of skilled uh, older um, uh, Swiss players. And they were looking at him going, how does he do it? You know, like he does, makes things look so effortless. And uh, when they had to follow him as the leader, they were just like, oh, my God, this kid's unbelievable. So uh, we knew right. Uh, we knew very early that he was going to be good. Uh, I tell this story and I probably told it a couple times, maybe to Nick, but uh, I can remember uh, telling Pat Brisson, who was his agent at the time, I said, Pat, you know, I said, by the end of the year, he'll be the best player in the league. And I was wrong because he was the best player in the league right away. <laughs> Man, that's wild. And, and I think the unique thing about when he was drafted, a lot of the focus and emphasis was on Patrick Laine being the goal scorer of the two. Are you shocked uh, at this guy being the goal scorer that he is? That we're already having this conversation. He's in his mid twenties. He could be the greatest goal scorer of all time. Period. End stop. Yeah, you know you're absolutely right. And again, he works on it. Um, uh, I had Joe Sackick um, earlier in my career, and Joe was uh, one of the masters at uh, the deception that he had in his shooting. He could shoot so far back in his stance, and um, I, I'm uh, I'm sure you know. Um, Carter can tell you that's so hard for the goaltenders to pick up. And he has such a unique release that he can shoot at different points. And again, like that goal last night, if he, if he's at the lady tees, um, he's going to score. He's just a pure, pure shooter, but his release is the one that uh, to me sets him apart. And now he's worked at his strength. He's worked at, at the ability to fend people's off. Um, 
I think he's starting to score in the heavier traffic areas. I know that's something that he talked about working on uh, for this year, and he certainly has accomplished that. And the next for step for him is to do that when the checking gets really, really, really tight in the playoffs. And, you know, it's hard for everybody to score, let alone if you're uh, Austin Matthews. But I like the work that he's done and the thought process that he has heading into this playoffs. Yeah, Mark, that's the truth. Guys like that, um, they're so deceptive. And I try to explain that to other people who haven't, obviously, have got to play in the NHL. It's not how hard you shoot at times. It's how you can fool the goalie with deception. And, you know, for you, obviously, getting to be on the Sens bench when he scored his four, um, you know, what is that moment like for you as a guy? You know, you're, you're coaching with the Sens, but, you know, obviously, you have ties to Austin. That's got to be a unique situation that you were in. I can remember watching his mother celebrate on, on, on every shot that he took, and I, I thought that was pretty uh, unique. There's a great story. Guy Boucher, who's the assistant now for uh, for for Toronto, uh, uh, we were at the end of the second period, and he says, yeah, he says, Austin's actually playing pretty well, isn't he? I said, yeah, he's got three goals. <laughs> So uh, I'm sure Guy loves having him on his own team now much better than trying to uh, uh, to to stop him on the other team. But yes, Austin, uh, he was a re that was a remarkable night. Um, and uh, a lot of people forget we won that game in overtime and it was an important two points for us because it probably set us on the way uh, to being a playoff team. And in that year, we came within a whisker of getting to the Stanley Cup finals. It's true. Um, is there a specific skill set that you think he doesn't get enough credit for possessing? Um, I, I think it's the way he protects the puck. Um, I, I think he's become so adept now at, at keeping the puck in his feet, at, uh, at really being good at, uh, at, at sensing now the defensemen and how they play. He's got such a good book on, on defensemen now. And I think that's what um, I'm seeing anyways, is that he now knows who he's playing against and he understands uh, more than most players uh, what it takes to beat certain defensemen. And, and that's experience. So, uh, again, I think all of those things bode well as he continues on in his learning curve of how, how to be a, a great player at the playoff time. And, uh, you know, I, I, I would never underestimate Austin. I just think he's he's always a guy that's trying to strive to be a little bit better. He's got that quiet sort of way about him, and he doesn't show you um, maybe all the time outwardly the emotion that he's feeling inside. But believe me, he feels it tremendously. And again, I, I think the, the best part of his game is how hard he works at his game. And he works at specific things to, to make himself better. Yeah, you know, for me, I, I always found that humbling during my career as someone where we have our peers and we've all dedicated our lives to the game and to have someone that is so much better and so much more elite, it, it's always so impressive. And he's one of those guys that I just can't put in a box where I think about Alex Ovechkin, you know, he scored, I think, nine goals on me in my career where he's, you know, he's just a raw shooter. Where Austin can beat you in so many different ways. Do you think, do you truly believe he's the best goal scorer of all time seeing him in like, you know, live right now? He's the best goal scorer right now. Like, you know, it's it's hard to put it in a category. I think that a lot of things change. Um, you know, the, just the amount of personal coaching that there is now. Uh, and who knows how good uh, uh, people like Gordie Howe and Joe Sackick and John Beliveau and those guys would have been if they had some of these skill mentors that um, Austin has been exposed to. Um, I just think the video analysis uh, uh, that they're, uh, they're exposed to, the, the shooting professionals, uh, and, and really what it comes down to at the end, the one thing that's a similarity through the ages is guys that work at their game and guys that are committed to try and get better all the time. That's the one similarity, but the, the tools that Austin has, I mean, he's the best of, of his generation right now. Uh, and I, I don't think it's fair to, to say some of these other people, uh, given those tools, might not have been as good or at least similarly good. Uh, but Austin is a remarkable uh, scorer. So doing the math, sure. Crow, uh, you're six hours ahead, but obviously you're watching the games. Uh, full dedication to you. Um, what do you make of this Maple Leafs team, and do you think they can finally push through this spring? I had a, a good friend of mine who's a bigger Leaf fan than I am, 
I, I was a huge Leaf fan growing up. You know, I loved Frank Mahovlich. He was my favorite player. Loved went to Davy Keon's hockey school, and uh, I go a long way back uh, uh, with the Maple Leafs. So. I I talked to him the other day and he says, who are you picking in the playoffs? And I always go, I, I'm saying, I'm, it's the Leafs year. And, you know, one of these years we're going to be right. We are going to be right. But I love their acquisition of Edmondson on, on defense. I think he's the kind of defenseman that they have needed. I, I mean, they, you know, they, they thought they had that in Muzzins, but injuries kind of uh, uh, hurt him. But I think Edmondson is really a playoff style uh, defenseman, and he takes a big burden off O'Reilly um, in terms of being the number one matchup guy, and it allows uh, it allows Morgan to uh, to play a little bit more freely. And uh, you know, I like the veteran experience that they've got. If you can keep um, if if you can uh, keep some of their defensemen at lower minutes, it's really going to help the uh, the older guys. And uh, uh, again. One of these days, they're going to have the right mix. And why not this year? It might be one of those years where everything That's like the slogan for Leafs Nation. Why not this year? I'll end you on this. Uh, does Matthews get to 70, in your opinion? Uh, yeah, I think he's there. I think the two goals last night were, were crucial. I mean, he can, he can score two <laughs> goals in a shift. And like you said earlier, he scored four in his first game against us. So I've seen it happen so many uh, times. And usually his his goal production is two goals every three games so he's got to score it in two i think he's more than capable of doing that and i think these games there's going to be a couple of tight ones but there's going to be one of them that's going to be a loose game and he'll be poisoned in that game that's for sure and uh, and like we've said uh, earlier he's really worked at trying to score in the high pressure moments now so i think he's kind of recognizing that these high pressure moments are what he's going to be seeing tough to bet against austin matthews that's for sure crow can't thank you enough i know you're out in switzerland appreciate your time today and giving us this uh, unique perspective on this journey our pleasure okay, that thanks, is uh, guys. mark crawford head you. coach out in zurich of course uh coach austin matthews uh in his draft year and, and that's really cool man like he saw him from day one and i thought that was a really good question by you it's like, hey, did, as soon as you saw this guy, like people will lie. He was not lying where it's like he saw Austin Matthews. He's like, this guy is an absolute stud. And, uh, you know, that's my lasting memory, too, is like when Matthews was drafted. And I remember uh, I was together for with some buddies doing a bit of a pre-drink for a random night out. And the draft lottery was on and we sallied a bit. We had some shots after Matthews was uh, going to go first overall of the Maple Leafs. But I remember that draft vividly because it was more about Patrick Laine was a shooter. And the better all-around player was Austin Matthews. Like, the focus on that conversation wasn't really about Austin Matthews being this dynamic sniper who could be one of the best ever one day. It's kind of crazy how it worked out, eh? Yeah, and it's one of those things, I think, circle back to what Crow was saying. He just loves his game, and he works on his game, and he grinds on his game. And if there's one thing that I've learned being around hockey or being around these guys that are just – uh, generational players and guys that have just really grown into who they are, all of them just work on their game. And there's like a certain grind to them. And it's not just hockey. It's every sport. You talk about the best. You talk about Tiger Woods. You talk about Kobe Bryant. You talk about all these guys. They just love the game. They're constantly working on their game and they're grinding and grinding and grinding. And like he touched on, he may not show it to you, but like there's a lot of emotion that Austin deals with. There's a guy that personally knows him very well. So for me, it's awesome to see. And, and it shows over time where, you know, what a draft pick could be, but what you can turn yourself into, right? Like just getting there and having that drive and wanting to be that player. There's a lot of things that have to fall into place, but the number one underlying thing with most successful players in any sport is that drive to work on their game and be better. There are select players and that's why we call them elite and star players and superstars and, and that um, where it's like, they are always looking to get better. You look at Crosby, you look at what he's done throughout his career, you look at McDavid, you look at McKinnon, dry saddle. Every year it's like something new is added to the toolbox. And it's been the exact same way for Austin Matthews. I mean, to answer the question I asked Crow about the skill set, I don't think Austin Matthews gets enough respect for how good he is defensively. Like, that's been the big story to me. Yeah, he's got 68 tucks, but you watch him every fucking shift, how many guys he pickpockets. Like, it's nuts. He took a penalty last night. I'm like, ah. I think you should give the guy a bit more respect because every game he's like lifting sticks, he's stealing pucks, his attention to detail, 
This guy's the top three player, if not maybe the best player on the planet right now. I said it because he is playing out of this world, and I don't think he's getting the respect for it, weirdly. Yeah, he definitely is. And and there's an experience that comes with that. I, I, like you, you talk about how he's grown as a player, and, and I think about my career, and not to say like I'm anywhere near what he is, but in the sense of like how I grew as my career went on, right? Like to think I was undrafted and I've dealt with this and I – I grew into a goalie that could be a full-time NHL guy where Austin Matthews has all the talent, but what he's done with it. And then you're surrounded by other people who help you get better. You meet other people that are successful for me, like different talents that have made me become who I was as a goalie. So Austin Matthews is one of those guys. He's a sponge though, right? He's been exposed to all the best players in the world. He's learning things as well, right? You're never like too good to add things to your toolbox. And that's what I always see with him is he's always improving. He's always getting better. And you know, some of the things that I dealt with and, and that he's going to help guys with now, now being the guy you talk about a young Nick Robertson, you talk about these other guys getting to be around a guy like that is just going to help those players get better. And it's, he drags guys into working hard, doing more for me. I remember my first year in Nashville, watching Pekka Rene down in the far end, like work like a freak and how committed he was to his game. So you talk about Austin Matthews for the Leafs being that way. Now you have all these other guys that are around that. It just breeds a winning culture. And, and he's a guy that makes your team better, not just on the rink himself. He makes every other player better as well. This guy's just built differently, that's for sure. And looking forward to Saturday's game against Detroit, where, again, I will be playing the Austin Matthews anytime goal. I had two plus last night, so I hit that as well. I think it was around plus 350, uh, the value on that. And I'll probably hit that. I think he gets it tomorrow night, gets it out of the way. And then they can deploy him with whatever way they want in the Tuesday, Wednesday game. I think in a perfect world, you get to 70. I don't play Matthews against the Panthers. It's not mind games. I just don't want the guy playing a back-to-back. -back. I think perfect utilization. Put him out on Wednesday in Tampa, season finale. A couple days off, then right at it on Saturday. Uh, on the road, staying in Florida. Like, that's my one or two. Do they come back home or do they stay in Florida after that road trip? They probably come back home, but... They're going to go right back to Florida, which I think is really, really intriguing. The Botano wrap-up is presented by Botano.ca. The game starts now 19+. plus. Please play responsibly. Botano is the official partner of Copa America 2024, taking the beautiful game to new heights in the Americas. Join Botano on their journey of passion, unity, and unforgettable football moments. Should know it as well. Still an outside shot. It could be Boston. Um, but I, I still think it's really likely it's going to be the Florida Panthers. But uh, any bets you like tonight or over the weekend here, Huts? No, honestly, I, I tonight's going to be a tough one, right? I, I honestly like the, I don't mind the Coyotes in Edmonton tonight. I think this is going to be a game where they could go in there and upset them. They've been, you know, at times playing well, Kevin, Kelvin Picard's in net tonight. So if I'm taking the underdog, I might try to touch on that game. Other mm -hmm. than that, I can just see the Preds just taking the team under for the Hawks tonight. Cause I think the way the Preds are going, they seem to have a lot of success when they go into Chicago. Hey, I'll give you a shout out too on Tuesday. I think you had uh, Montreal beating Philadelphia. You doubled down on that, and they didn't just beat them. They beat the fucking piss out of them. Um, it was 9 3 in that game, but Philly ends the eight game uh, losing streak last night. I still think it's curtains for that team. Uh, I, I love John Tortorella and the ongoing drama with that guy and his life now in Philadelphia, but uh, great call by you, Huts. I, I don't know if I'm going to play tonight's card. Not crazy about it. I do like the Arizona look, especially. I don't I don't think it makes any sense for Edmonton to play Connor McDavid in this game. So I would continue to rest the guy. Lower body. Like, you're going to see. If Matthew scores 70, he's going to come up with some lower body or upper body issue that they're going to use and say, hey, he can't play tonight, which I think is genius. I'm not... I'm not discrediting the information that Connor McDavid's hurt. Are we stretching it? Are we exaggerating it a bit? Probably, but that makes the, the most sense for the best player on the planet getting set for the Stanley Cup playoffs. But again, I am playing uh, Matthews on Saturday, anytime goal. Give me Tyler Bertuzzi as well. I love the revenge narrative against Detroit. So, uh, Hutz, great job this week. Um, closer and closer to the Stanley Cup playoffs, man. Like, we're almost there. This is fun stuff. Yeah, it's exciting, right? I think all the hype and all the talk and all the storylines, it all kind of gets quieted here soon, right? It's just, what yep. can you do for me now? And it's, and it's an exciting time to be a hockey fan and uh, especially a Leafs fan. I'll have to check the schedule. Are you with me on Monday? I don't know. Okay. I, usually wait, I usually wait till the day of, buddy, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, I am with you. Great to know. Great to know the preparation on this podcast. I'm just busting you. Uh, I believe Hutz is with me on Monday. So whoever's with me, whether it's Hutz or Anthony Stewart, yeah, we're going me. to... Okay, there you go. There, there's the final call. So you are prepared. You're ready. Hutz is going to be back in the mix on Monday. Uh, we're going to recap this game. There's going to be two left. 
Um, let's hope we're just talking about Austin Matthews scoring 70 goals and how great he is, although we do that every podcast, which we love here. So thank you to everybody in the chat at the Least Nation 401. Hope you enjoyed today's guest in the form of Mark Crawford. What an absolute legend. Producer Vic, bang up job all week long. Uh, so have a great weekend, everybody. For Carter Hutton, I'm Nick Alberga. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Take care. Make sure to check out more of our content right here on the Leafs Nation YouTube page. We got long form interviews, we got clips, we got epic rants by Jay Rozo. We simply have it all. And don't forget, you can find out much more at theleafsnation.com. Thanks so much.